there was another study done, which you may have heard about by now, uh, regarding alcohol and cancers. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, first I'll go over the articles that I've read, so I'm looking down at my papers. Um, and, of course, I have to have glasses. Okay, so the study itself was in PLOS med Medicine, um, and it was a population-based, sorry, I have to look down, so I'll try and hold this up so I don't have to look down. Uh, population-based cohort study using data from 99,654 adults, of which 68.7% were female, aged 55 to 74 years old, participating in the U.S. prostate, lung, colorectal, and ovarian cancer screening trial. Um, now, I had no idea what a cohort study was, so I looked that up. And it's a study design where one or more samples, called cohorts, are followed prospectively and subsequent status evaluations with respect to a disease or outcome are conducted to determine which initial participants' exposure characteristics or risk factors are associated with it. It's a study. Okay, so the conclusion is that the results indicate that intakes of alcohol below one drink per day were associated with the lowest risk of death. And it went on to say the evidence should not be taken to support a protective effect of light drinking. So it's not saying if you only drink, you know, like one drink per day or half a drink per day that you're not going to get cancer. Um, it's it's not going to coat your body and protect you from cancer. Um, there was also a statement when I was reading this study thing. Alcohol-related cancers include breast cancer, colorectal cancer, head and neck cancer, liver cancer, and esophage esophageal esophageal cancer. And I will post a link to the study below, so if you want to go and read all the dryness of it, <laughs> um, you can. Um, so that's the basic of the study itself. And um, then the different articles, I first heard about this as I was coming to work and heard it on NPR in the morning. And so, that was one of the first articles that I looked up online. Um, and it says, light drinking is defined as one to five drinks per week and heavy drinkers are at the most risk. Okay, heavy drinkers are at the most risk for everything. Um, but one of the, the downsides is that it only followed people age 55 to 74. So it didn't take into account younger people with cancer, only basically senior citizens with cancer. Um, so, and that was when the study began, was when they were 55 to 74. So, um, oh, I don't have it down here. I believe this study went for 10 years. So they would have been 65 to 84 when it ended. Um, oh, nine years. Okay, researchers tracked their health for about nine years and they found that the more a person drank, the higher their risk of getting cancer and dying. Okay, it seems like the more you drink, the more your risk for anything and dying is. So it kind of makes sense. Um, and the article went on to say, the study adds to the evidence that cancer risk may rise when people drink more than one drink per day, but the increase is modest. Moderate drinkers in the study had about a 10% increase risk of getting cancer. So, let's see. But the increase is moderate. Moderate drinkers had about a 10% increased risk of getting cancer. So if you're 
moderate drinker as opposed to a light drinker, then you have a 10% chance more of getting cancer. Or, yeah, yeah, your risk goes up like 10% if you start drinking more. And about 19% of cancers are linked to smoking. I was kind of surprised that that was as low as it was. 8% are linked to obesity or excess body weight. And about 5% are linked to alcohol. So you're talking 5% of all cancers are linked to alcohol. That seems like a really low number considering this whole thing. Um, and a direct quote from Susan Gapster, an epidemiologist with the American Cancer Society, says, alcohol is estimated to account for 39,060 breast cancers in the U.S. per year in women. Okay, well, I was never, well, I went through a phase where I was a heavy drinker, but that was a long, long time ago. <laughs> My wild child days. Um, I, you know, for the last 20 years, I haven't had more than, I don't know, maybe five drinks a year. So, I, I would put it off more to the body weight issue since I was overweight for all my life, you know, up until just a couple of years ago. Um, but it's kind of ironic that I lose the weight and then I get the, the breast cancer. Um, I don't know. And I will link all of these articles that I'm citing below so that if you want to go and look at them, you can. Um, the article from CNN says, those who never drank had a slightly higher risk than those who had, and those who had more than 0.5, which is half a drink per day, had a much higher risk. So if you're in that moderate level where it's less than one drink per day, you're at the best. And the risk went up more, excuse me, the risk went up the more someone drank. Well, I think that's what that just said. But um, it also went on to say the study could have been more valuable if it provided specific risk factors for individual cancers. So like, you know, the risk factor for breast cancer is this much and the risk factor for colorectal cancer is this much, you know. Um, and, oh, and that was actually a direct quote from Dr. Ann McTiernan, a cancer prevention researcher at the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center in Seattle, and she was not involved in the research. Um, and she went on to say, equally problematic was that they classified men and women in the same relation to categories of alcohol use. Women metabolize alcohol differently than men, so a light drinker for men may be more of a moderate drinker for women. And thinking about this, this also goes for weight because a 125 pound person, man or woman, is going to metabolize the alcohol differently than a 250 or 300 pound person. So, I don't know. My favorite article was out of the New York Times it was written by Aaron E. Carroll, and I love this. Okay, and I'm, I'm quoting the article itself, which he wrote. It's easy to use studies to talk about cancer. Nothing illustrates this better than the classic 2013 study that examined research on 40 common ingredients selected from an ordinary cookbook. Researchers found 264 different studies touching on at least one of those ingredients. Their conclusion? Depending where you look, you can find evidence that says that nearly everything we eat is both associated with higher rates of cancer and lower rates of cancer. And I actually, I did link, I did look up the study and they took, I think it was the, the Boston cookbook or something like that, and they just chose these items at random, these ingredients at random, they took, they actually, they took 50 and they found 40 
or they took now I'm trying to remember because I did it um, they they selected 50 items and they found research on 40 of them I think it was and so you know out of the 40 there's already um, or out of the 50 there's already 40 studies showing that these items either cause or prevent cancer um, he also went on to say that it acknowledges that the greatest risks are with those who drink heavily but it cautions that even modest oh and it is the new the most recent study it acknowledges that the greatest risks are with those who drink heavily but it cautions that even modest drinking may increase the risk of cancer in the United States the announcement also notes 3.5 percent of cancer deaths are attributable to alcohol of course this means that 96.5 percent of cancer deaths are not attributable to alcohol way to turn it around if we eliminate heavy drinking which no one endorses as healthy and where the association is surest that number climbs if we also eliminate those who smoke because smoking is believed to intensify the relationship between alcohol and cancer the number of cancer deaths not attributed to alcohol approaches 100 percent my alarm clock just went off and shut off the video <sighs> at least i finished my sentence right <laughs> so he went on to say um, the author went on to say you can't look at any one cancer in a vacuum a person can get almost any cancer which makes sense doesn't it um and then a 2013 meta-analysis in the Annals of Oncology that looked at all cancers found that overall light drinking was protective, moderate drinking had no effect, and heavy drinking was detrimental. A 2013 analysis. Same results that they're spouting as new and oh my gosh, look at what we discovered. Now, as I was going through this article on the New York Times, and when I was, you know, taking down my information, one thing I saw at the top of the article was written in 2017. It wasn't even referring to this new study. So how many studies have there been about alcohol and cancer? my next page <laughs> um, now this one the National Cancer Institute at the National Institutes of Health the NIH NIH um, the National Cancer Institute on the NIH site had a page where it says what is the evidence that alcohol drinking is a cause of cancer Okay, get the latest information straight from the National Cancer Institute. Based on extensive reviews of research studies, there is a strong scientific consensus of an association between alcohol drinking and several types of cancer. In its report, in its report on carcinogens, the National Toxicology Program of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services lists list consumption of alcoholic beverages as a known human carcinogen. The research evidence indicates that the more alcohol a person drinks, particularly the, particularly the more alcohol a person drinks regularly over time, the higher his or her risk of developing an alcohol-associated cancer. Okay, that backs up everything so far. Clear patterns have emerged between alcohol consumption and the developing, development of the following types of cancer. And then it has different types of cancers broken out. So I just pulled up breast cancer. Um, more than 100 epidemiologic, am I saying that right? 
studies have looked at the association between alcohol consumption and the risk of breast cancer in women. Um, I don't want to just read off every little thing. Um, the studies have consistently found an increased risk of breast cancer associated with increasing alcohol intake. And it goes on to analysis and studies. Um, the risk of breast cancer was higher across all levels of alcohol intake. For every 10 grams of alcohol consumed per day, oh, excuse me, boy, uh, coffee is just kind of getting to me today. Um, for every 10 grams of alcohol consumed per day, which is slightly less than one drink, researchers, researchers observed a small 7% increase in the risk of breast cancer. The Million Women study in the United Kingdom provided a more recent and slightly higher estimate of breast cancer risk at low to moderate levels of alcohol consumption. Every 10 grams of alcohol consumed per day was associated with a 12% increase in the risk of breast cancer. So that seems to back everything up, right? That page was last updated in June of 2013. So once again, we have a study that I don't get. What is so new and fantastic about this that everybody is touting it and pushing it out there and making it headline news that um, all they're doing is repeating what we've already known, what they've already known, what has already been reported and studied. I just don't get it. If, you, if there's something you see and I'm not getting, comment down below because you know, I, I want to see the big breaking news that, yeah, we have a pill that you can take and it'll take your cancer away, you know. This will break up your cancer and get rid of it and you don't have to have chemo or a lumpectomy or anything like that. So, that's where the studies are today. Who knows where they'll be tomorrow. Probably something new will come out that came out 10 years ago. <sighs> okay, so that's the latest update. And, oh, it just makes you wonder what they do. You know, this is probably grant money or tax dollars or something that they're just wasting. <sighs> oh my gosh, you know, and, and I'm really not a big believer in all those like pink ribbon campaigns and all that because I think all the money goes to stuff like this where they're just wasting their money. And I, I know some people really believe wholeheartedly in them and they buy all the pink ribbon stuff and because they believe that the money's going for something good and you know, more power to you. If you know, if that's what you believe, that's what you believe and I, I just don't see it, so um, I, I would rather donate my money to something that I know is using it wisely and for legitimate research or care and anyway, so next time there's a study reported I'll be back here reporting on the study or the articles at least <laughs> um, don't forget to comment down below if you have any requests or um, something you'd like to see if you have a comment on the video and don't forget to like the video and if you haven't done so subscribe and hit that notification bell and until the next time, aloha, bye-bye.